Greetings fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers and welcome to this painting tutorial. I'm going to show you a fast technique for painting the intruder aliens in a game of Nemesis by Awaken Realms. This is a quick technique I came up with so I could get them on the tabletop and looking good as fast as possible. I hope you find it useful. Okay, these are all the miniatures you get in the base set. Now we've got two different types. We've got aliens and we've got crew men and women. So uh, there's a different approach for both of these. Now the style I'm going to do the aliens in is very much like the film alien. They're going to be black and dark with tinges of silver and glossy carapaces and it's going to be very a uh, simple paint job because I want to get through them all quickly so I can play with them and I like that dark mysterious alien movie look. So of course I'm going to prime all of these black with a spray black. Now these ones of course are the crew and I'll be doing those in my usual way which is to prime them with white because I prefer to prime my miniatures with a white undercoat unless of course I want them to be mostly black. So we've got two different types. We're going to have a white spray undercoat on those and a black spray undercoat on those. Now of course most of the time before you prime miniatures you go over them very carefully and you clean off any mold lines and any bits of plastic that are sticking out. Now these are very nicely done miniatures. Uh, none of the mold lines are obvious or jump out at you. So I'm not going to bother doing that. I'm going to prime them first. And the reason I do this is because once I've primed them those mold lines that are really obvious really jump out and I can remove them then and then just paint over that bit of paint that I've scraped back. This saves a lot of time because I don't end up going through and removing a whole lot of mold lines that you don't even see from a distance. Right, here's all the crew on my stick that I use for priming. Uh, you've seen this before but it's just a piece of wood with a bit of metal glued to the top. There's a bit more gluing actually and uh, some blocks of foam to hold it and I'll go outside and give this a good old spray of white primer. And of course don't forget to wear a gas mask to protect your lungs. And there are the crew all primed and ready to paint. And you can see once they're primed I can really notice if I can get in there. See there's a, a mold line on that one just going over the shoulder area. And it becomes much more obvious with the white prime. So um, I can cut that away a little bit. But apart from that there's really not much in the way of clean up to do. They're ready to paint. Right here are the black figures all ready to prime. Of course I've stuck these on my um, sticks with uh, bits of blue tack. Uh, so that's pretty solid and I can move it around without them falling off. Um, there's quite a lot of figures so I've got two sticks worth and some large ones to do separately. Here you can see one of the alien figures primed. And this is the final result. This is what we're going for. Now as you can see I haven't finally painted this figure by hand. I've been using some dry brushing techniques, some washing techniques and then a little bit of detail painting on top of that. And using this technique I really got all the aliens painted in the Nemesis set very very quickly. And I think the results are pretty good. Uh, it looks suitably menacing and horrific and it looks a bit like the aliens from the film Alien which is what I'm going for. So I'm starting with Lead Belcher and I'm just going to do an overall very very light dry brush over the figure just to bring out all the uh, contours of the figure using a Citadel Shade brush because it's a nice soft brush. And I'm getting off almost all of the paint onto a towel and then very lightly dry brushing the figure. Now I want to avoid brush strokes as much as possible so this is why I'm very carefully doing this and not laying on the paint too thickly. And you can see with a light dry brush you start bringing out all the, the uh, detail in the figure and we get an overall base coat without actually having to do any painting. With a figure that's as detailed as this one, this kind of approach really makes sense. You save a lot of time. Of course the other approach would be to paint the whole thing and then wash it. But in this case I want a lot of darkness and a lot of black in this figure. So this is the best way of getting that effect. And there's the final result. As you can see you do have some brush texture in there of course using this method but um, it still looks pretty good and you've got lots of uh, black still in the shadows and this is a good uh, basis to start working from. Here are all the adult alien figures with that dry brush. And you can, as you can see I've built up quite a lot of the uh, gun metal paint on it 
but um, I'm going to be washing this down so it'll get a lot darker with washes. And talking about washes, here's the first one, Nuln Oil, which is, of course, a black wash. And this is where we'll be really toning down uh, that silver or that gunmetal dry brush and darkening it up and putting back some of the uh, shadow detail that we took out with the dry brush. So I just carefully apply the wash all over the figure. And as usual, when I'm applying a wash, I don't want it to pull too much in the recesses. So I can dry my brush on a paper towel quickly and uh, dab up any uh, wash that's pulled in the recesses. And you can see I'm also putting the wash on the base because I dry brushed that as well. You can see that's darkened things down a bit. And this is where I check the figure carefully to see that I haven't got the wash pulling too much. And here's the result when I've done all the alien figures. You can see I'm doing all this batch in one go. The gunmetal is now darkened down a bit and we've got a little bit more shadow back on the figure. Right, the next step is to take a Rune Fang Steel and this is where I'm going to do a very light highlight dry brush. So using my soft brush, I wipe most of it off on a paper towel and then just do some very, very light dry brushes on the highlight areas. You can see I'm just picking out bits that would catch the light, the ends of those sharp scythe-like appendages, and, and just adding a little bit of a sharp silver glint to bits that would catch the light. This gives it a, more of a sense of volume. Don't forget the end of the knee there. The knuckles of the hands. And there you go, that makes the figure look a little bit more three-dimensional at this scale. Here are all the adult aliens done up to that stage. And you can see it's really starting to come together now. Next step is to make that gunmetal and silver shade a little bit more interesting by some Drakenhof Nightshade. And this is where we start to go a bit blue. We're still getting that lovely metallic alien feel, but uh, just adding a bit of tone to it. I'm using a layer brush here. I think a large layer brush, a medium layer brush actually it is. And I'm using a smaller brush so I can control the application of this wash a bit more. And I'm just painting this over the metal areas to add a bit of a blue tinge to the metal. And to me this makes it look a bit more interesting. Of course you don't have to use blue here, you could use a green wash if you wanted more of a green metallic tinge or any colour you want really. And of course when I'm applying this wash I want to make sure I don't get it on the base because I don't want a blue tinge to my metal grating. As before make sure it doesn't pull too much in the recesses and make sure on areas like the knee there, you're just getting a nice tint to the silver and it's not uh, pooling or drying in blobs. And of course, I don't have to be too precise with the application of this. It's just uh, giving an overall effect. Don't worry about painting that carapace over the head because we'll be painting that black later. And of course, when you're using washes, this is inevitably probably going to happen. It's so common to knock over wash pots of ink and spill all your very expensive ink. So if you do, just take a large brush like this one and just roll it in the ink, soak it up and then put it back into the pot. And you'll find you'll be able to retrieve virtually all the ink, unless of course you spill it on some very difficult surface. So here are all the figures uh, washed with blue and you can see that it's given a nice blue tinge. Now you can do one or two coats of this depending how heavy you want your blue effect. Next, I'm going to paint that head carapace and just in black, very easy to do. At the end, I'll be giving this a gloss varnish so it's really glossy and shiny, but it really only needs one good coat of black. Time for some detailing work. Bugman's Glow is a good dark flesh color and I'm using that for the sort of fleshy bits between the wings and also for the mouth. So these bits of tendon or skin that hold the wings or sides or whatever they are together, I'm painting in Bugman's Glow. You may need two applications of this to get a very good coverage, but the pigment in this particular paint is pretty good, so I think I only used one coat. Now, if you do accidentally put paint on another paint of the figure, and we all do this occasionally, just douse it in water. It's a good way to get rid of mistakes like this. Douse it in water and then rub it off with the brush. 
And you'll find if you do this quickly, you can um, erase the mistake. Don't forget to do the edges of those detailed areas. Be as neat as you can, but of course you don't have to be absolutely precise because we'll be putting another wash over this which will blend in the edges a little bit. Now I'm pretty roughly going to paint inside the mouth with that fleshy colour as well. And here's the final result. So all those little detailed areas have been painted. And it's starting to really come to life now. Next up, I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade to do some blotchy washing on the bases. And this just muddies and dirties them up a bit, makes them look a bit more realistic. As you can see, I'm doing this very roughly. Seraphim Sepia is the next wash I'm using, and that is to wash the fleshy detailed areas I did before. And it'll also help these areas blend into the body of the miniature and bring out the detail in the mouth. Just a nice heavy application there. You don't have to worry about this pooling too much because you actually want it quite dark where it joins the rest of the miniature. Very easy to do. Of course, don't forget I'm letting everything dry thoroughly between all these steps. The last thing you want to do is paint on top of wet areas. Now that base is dry, I'm using a bit of riser rust to add a bit of character to the bases. I take a bit of this on my brush and wipe most of it off on a paper towel. You might want to use an old brush for this. And then just dab bits of it onto the base to give a rust effect. You can also wipe a bit off with your finger if it gets too heavy. And try not to overdo it, you just want to do it in the corners where you think rust would gather. And this adds a bit of realism to your metallic bases. Next some typhus corrosion to add a bit of dirt and corrosion to those bases as well. Of course you might want really shiny clean bases um, but because of some of the rubble on these bases I think it's appropriate to add a bit of this damage. And again paint this just in the recesses where it will get all dirty and grubby. Time to go back in and do a little bit more highlighting. Back to Rune Fang Steel. And this time I'm actually painting on a few dabs of highlights, little bits where light would catch the edges. So I'm just doing this on the sharpest little spots, the edge of the knees, the ends of little sharp areas, tiny little dabs of silver that just give the whole figure a little bit more volume. And really, this is the only relatively careful painting step in the whole procedure. Now you'll note that I'm not going to highlight that black carapace because I'm going to let the glossy varnish catch the light itself. So it won't need artificial painted highlights. You can see I'm using an edge brushing technique there just to put a very thin line of highlight along the sharp edge. Just using the edge of the brush. Don't overdo it and these little subtle highlights will really make the figure pop. Some Kislev Flesh is a lighter flesh colour I can use to highlight the fleshy bits on the miniature. And using this colour I'm doing a few highlights inside the mouth and highlighting the lines of the tendons. Of course I'm using a smaller better quality brush for these hand painted highlights. And finally, a tiny bit of white scar to pick out the teeth in the mouth. And really, you can put these tiny little dabs anywhere you like, depending how many teeth you want showing. Or you may prefer your alien to be a bit gummy. On this sculpt, the teeth are a little bit more obvious. And there we go, they're all starting to look pretty good. Just a final little bit of detail work to really bring them to life. And of course that is 
blood and slime. First I use Citadel's technical paint blood for the blood god. And this is a great blood to use. I used to mix up my own recipe of, for blood, but this stuff really does the trick. Just use a sort of frayed brush and give a little flick over the bits where you want some blood. And as with all things like this, don't be too heavy handed. Keep physics in mind because uh, if you've got blood coming out of the mouth, then it's probably going to drip on the chest plate, plate or on the uh, base. And that's all you need. That's actually quite a lot of blood there. So really don't overdo it. Otherwise, it'll look a bit silly. And try and tell a little story with uh, each application of stuff like this. In this case, the alien's hands are getting most of the blood. And maybe just a little bit on the tail and in the mouth. And in fact, adding blood to the mouth uh, for these figures is really good because it also makes that sort of fleshy, bloody area just a bit more frightening. Next, I go to Nurgle's Rot for a bit of slime because in this game you can get slimed by the aliens. Um, so I'm adding a bit to the mouth, a little bit of a drip down the chest as well. And in some cases, I'm going to have it drip down onto the floor plating as well. Again, don't overdo it and it'll really add a little bit of extra character to those miniatures. Ugh, that looks horrible. I've even in this case had the slime drip off the base a little bit just to make it even a bit more interesting. But that really sells the idea that the slime is dripping from his mouth. Now before this step I actually varnish the figures. I use a semi-gloss varnish usually and it's particularly appropriate for these miniatures because you want them to be slightly glossy. So I've spray glossed the entire miniature with semi-gloss and after that's completely dry I'm going back with a heavy spot application of gloss varnish just to the carapace and a little bit in the mouth as well to get it all glossy and disgusting. And this really makes the head pop and gives the miniature that alien feel. And here they are all finished. So that's eight miniatures and that really didn't take very long to do. Uh, as you can see, I did them in a batch and just did it stage by stage. And I think the end result looks great, especially from tabletop distance. Um, these aren't painted for display. These are painted for um, use. So um, there are a few tiny little flash lines on there that I didn't bother removing, but the idea was to paint these quickly. So I hope you enjoyed this look at painting the Nemesis Aliens. It's a fantastic game. I highly recommend it. Make sure you grab yourself a copy. If you like the alien theming, you'll absolutely love Nemesis. So thanks for watching. That's the Esoteric Order of Gamers. Orderofgamers.com is where you'll find me. And of course on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course my Patreon page as well if you want to support this channel. Don't forget to subscribe, hit all notifications, and I'll see you next time. Good gaming and good painting.